morning, everyone, and welcome to A Sip of Coffee with Casey, where we take about 10 minutes out of our day to go over some important issues in real estate for buyers, sellers, about the market and things like that. Um, first of all, we start off the new decade. This is the first show of the new decade uh, with Nick Backstrom signing with the Washington Capitals. So it, uh, the decade is already getting off to a booming start. Um, God, if we keep those two guys together for a long time, that would sure be wonderful. So let's look back from 2010 to 2022. There was a considerable amount of growth in the second half of the decade. So from 215 to 220, that growth was up about 15 to 20% higher than the first. And what that tells you is we have a little bit of momentum going into the start of this decade. And now we all come to the point where we're coming to the spring and when do we put our houses on? You know, is it January? Is it February, March, April? When is the best time? Wait for the flowers. Well, here's, here's something I want everyone to think about. First of all, we have had a nice little run, and every time we get a run up on, on pricing, everyone pushes their house onto the market. So I'm going to draw your attention to a few charts. Uh, the first chart I have, this one's coming out of Oakton, the Waples Mill area, 33 or uh, 3,300 square foot home, built about 2004. What did that go for over the last, from 2009 through that decade? So if you look at this chart, you can see it grew in 2013 and 14, right? Well, it got to 2015, and here's what happened. In 2015, everybody decided we can finally sell our house because the prices have gone up. So everyone came on the house with their, with, uh, with their properties. We were looking at 20 listings for every one or two sales. So what happened was the sales remained high, and everybody thought everything was fine. But the massive amount of inventory was affecting prices. So this is a price chart you're looking at. This is the value you know, based on price per square foot of these homes at these times. So what happened was we had a run up in pricing. Everybody put their house on the market. Inventory went skyrocketing high and prices got soft. So that's why this chart is important because it starts talking about what could happen coming in the next three months. Right now, we have no inventory. There's no doubt about it. We, ha we do not have inventory. The home should be selling. If it's on the market, it should be selling. If it's not, it's overpriced, and that's a whole different story. So what's about to happen, or what could happen, is everyone's decided the prices are up, the inventory is down, now's the time to sell, and boom, everything comes on the market. So before you know it, instead of having one house for five buyers to look at, you have 30 houses for five buyers to look at. This is exactly what happened in 2005. So, you know, I want everybody to be extremely cautious and keep an eye on the inventory, and this is going to affect prices. So if I have a bunch of buyers in the market and I only have two competitors, I'm going to be a little more aggressive on my pricing. But if you are not watching the inventory, now the next chart you look at, this is Woodson High School District. So you see the same thing. Ran up the prices, 2015 and 16, down the prices go. Go to the next one. There's Vienna. Vienna, 3,300 square foot homes, built in 2004. Look at what the pricing did in 2015, 2016. Okay? All I'm saying is that as we go through this year, we need to have one eye on, on the market at all times to make sure we're keeping an eye and making sure the balance of that inventory is where it is, okay? So um, my advice to sellers is if they are ready, there are no homes on the market. You sell when they yell, you buy when they cry. So, you know, they're yelling for, buy, for sellers. So now is the time for uh, people to get their houses on the market. Forget about the snow, forget about the rain. These are people that need to buy a home and don't have an inventory. I mean need. They're coming in from Texas. They're coming in from California. They're coming in from Connecticut. They don't want a house. They need a house. And so by default, some houses that, that may be a tad overpriced are, are selling. But so now is when the people are in town looking for that need. You offer them a good price. Let me give you a perfect example. We just ratified a contract today on a $1.55 million house. We had uh, four buyers circle. Before you know it, they all started bidding. 
and the house, uh, the, the final house will sell uh, for $1.6 million. So you have, an, even in that price range, a bump of $50,000 onto a list price. So, so when we price these homes, we may price it at a number where we're trying to get the maximum amount of people in that door, the maximum amount of builders, the max, or uh, bidders, the maximum amount of buyers. The buyer that just bought a $1.6 million house originally was looking in the $1.2 to $1.3 million price range. And they're selling at the end of this month for $1.6 million. So it doesn't matter where you start. When you see what you want, when you see what you have to have or what you really like, you will bid to a point where you know, you're going to buy that house and you're going to spend that extra money. Um, and you know, for that matter, it's not that you're overpaying. You may be paying April price in January, but at least you secure the house. Now, let me tell you um, a, a warning to, to you buyers. So sellers, for me, it's all about risk. I am risk averse. If there's nothing on the market, that's when I want to sell. Now, you buyers, when you come out, you're going to look at homes right now, and, um, and your realtor is going to advise you that, hey, this house may be listed at 615000 Pam and I went through this. Home could be worth 615000 That's what it's listed at. When I did the pricing evaluation, it could sell for six hundred forty-five to six hundred fifty thousand dollars. So, so be governed by the value of the property when you make your offers. Sellers, be realistic. Get the maximum amount of buyers in that door that you can. But you know, we need to be very thoughtful as we're going through these first three months to see is inventory up or down. Buyers, if you're going in after a house, you're going to have competition, and who knows how long it's going to last. But when you go in for that house, focus on what it's worth, not what it's listed for, and listen to your agent. A lot of times in the spring, people will bid on a house and lose, bid on a house and lose, bid on a house and lose. And then on the fourth house, they overpay. Don't, don't do that. Be very thoughtful. Take advice from your realtor. Make the proper offer, and away you go. This is Calfee with Casey. This was about uh, the spring of, uh, of 2000 or tw 2020 and, uh, and what I see coming ahead. So keep an eye on the inventory, and we'll see how everything shakes out. You can catch me at Cof uh, Casey at CaseySampson.com or 703-508-2535. We'd be happy to help.